Hey guys, and welcome back to a new series of PAN of Philips Android News in which I will summarize the most important news that affect us Android developers from the past month. This month was, well, March 2022. This time there wasn't actually too many very important changes, but there are actually two of those that I want to talk about here a bit more in detail because I think those are actually quite important and no Android developer should miss out there. Starting with a new API that Google actually just introduced and that just got into alpha, and that is the Jetpack Core Performance API. What is that? Well, that is an API that introduces so-called performance classes. And each class can now be used to better target specific types of devices. So for example, that means if your app is running on a device that supports the highest performance class, that means that your app can assume that this device has access to a lot of hardware power. So if you have some kind of premium features, some kind of features that require lots of hardware power, then you can now easily check that in code with this new API to unlock these features, so you can say, for these types of devices. So for basically devices that have quite a lot of performance, quite a good hardware, and if there are devices that don't have such a good hardware, maybe not a good camera, maybe not very high amount of RAM, then you can also check that very easily because these devices will have a lower performance class. So in the end, it becomes easier for us developers to toggle specific extra features based on the hardware performance of some devices. Now you might actually ask yourself what kind of criteria or what kind of um, categories are there that um, actually determine which performance class a specific device gets and Google actually distinguishes between three major criteria here. On the one hand that of course supports media. So how performant is that device when playing media, when maybe playing a game, are there any frame drops, how about um, audio encoding, how about some latency, that all belongs to the media category here that also plays a big role when it comes to the performance class of a device. And then number two, they actually consider the camera of the device, so the better the camera is, the higher the performance class will obviously also get. So what kind of resolution does it have? Um, I think HDR capturing, video stabilization, all that stuff goes into the camera metric here. And then finally we have a more generic category here which just yeah considers RAM for example and how, how fast the memory of the device is. It considers stuff like screen density, screen resolution, all that plays a role here for the generic one and all these three uh, categories together will in the end just make sure that your device will get the performance class it deserves. Then the second major change here, a major update in March 2022, is that we now have the Android 13 developer preview number two. So if you've watched the previous uh, PAN from February, then I introduced the um, developer preview number one. Now we have the preview number two. So basically what kind of features or what kind of changes will there be for Android 13. And I actually have to start with a change that rather disappoints me. And that is that Google will actually introduce notification permissions for Android 13. So what does that mean in the end? It means a lot more pain for us. And it's not just a permission like the internet permission that you just uh, throw into your manifest and all good. No, it's actually a runtime permission. So you need to request that permission if you actually want to show some kind of notification in your app. And I personally, I highly dislike that new change because of quite some reasons. I think the only real thing that does is that it makes our lives as developers a lot harder. Um, Google argues that they will actually increase users privacy and stuff like that, of course, because apps can't just show notifications if they want. Um, when I think about some very annoying notifications, then I th immediately think of all these mobile games that uh, show you, hey, get some extra coins by clicking here. And of course that's annoying and I understand that, but I don't understand why Google tries to solve this problem with a runtime permission. Because we actually already have the option to disable notifications for apps and not just to disable all notifications of an app. No, we can really specifically disable some types of notifications. Like 
if we have the Instagram app, we can only disable notifications for likes. So if someone liked your post and you don't like that notification, you just go to the app settings and you disable that notification. And that is behavior that is already in Android and no app needs some kind of permission to do that. The user can just revoke that, um, that permission for notifications and the app can't do anything about it. But by default, each app is allowed to show permissions. And I think that's a much, much better solution. And while I think that, of course, this, this type of notification settings might not be easily found by users who aren't really into Android, because you need to yeah, kind of deep dive into the app settings, I think it would be a much better path here to actually make this option to disable specific types of permissions to make this more prominent instead of introducing a runtime permission that makes it much more complex to actually implement permissions in your app. And let's just think about foreground services here. Like each foreground service needs to come with a notification, with a persistent notification. So if I'm understanding that correctly, and as far as I could take from the um, from Google in their documentation, that affects foreground services. So that means if you now want to launch a foreground service in Android, then you need to, first of all, of course, create the service itself. Then you need to create a notification channel and configure it. And then now you also need to properly handle runtime permission for showing a notification. That is so much stuff to do just to run a simple foreground service. And that will really become a pain, I think. Because if you really want to do it correctly, with managing your permissions, then it's not just requesting a permission. No, you need to actually deal with, well, what happens if the user declines the permission? Then you wanna show rational. What happens if the user actually permanently de uh, declines it? Then you want to show some other kind of dialogue. So there is a lot of stuff involved in this process of managing and handling permissions in Android that makes this new change so incredibly unnecessary and complex in my opinion. So this new change will be necessary or will you will need to request these permissions for all apps that target Android 13 at least. And now there will be some smart guys among you for sure that will think, ha hey, Google, I will actually not target Android 13, I will only target Android 12 and then I don't need to request a uh, notification permission. And well, partly you're correct with that. However, Google will still make your life a pain. Because if you don't target Android 13, then Google will request the permission for you. So there will be a dialogue once where you can either allow or grant this permission to show notifications, or there will be yeah, an option to disallow that. And that dialogue will show once you actually create the notification channel in your app. And now the thing with this dialogue is, so if your app does not target Android 13 and you can't implement proper, uh, proper permission handling on your own, then if the user clicks on don't allow, this dialogue will never appear again unless the user reinstalls the app. That's crazy. So Google is kind of indirectly forcing you to upgrade to or to rather update your target SDK to Android 13 to bypass this problem. But then you need to manage this on your own, which involves a lot more pain. So you have to decide between pain and pain. And yeah, it's up to you what you choose. So overall, I really, really dislike this change. I don't know why Google did this. Of course, I understand that uh, you, that privacy and stuff like that is very important to users and that they don't want to be annoyed by notifications. But I think this is really the wrong step because Google is just making our lives of, our, of us developers a lot harder while not giving the users a really significant advantage because, well, they can easily decline these permissions and then they won't see any, but they can already do that. I think they can just make the, the current options to disable notifications more prominent. So each app should just by default have the option to show notifications, but maybe Google should implement some kind of smart algorithm if the user maybe swipes away the notification quite often or if um, they actually have notifications by apps they, they don't use often, then they should maybe see a dialogue that comes from Google. Hey, you actually dismissed this notification quite often or this app you never used shows you quite a lot of notifications. Maybe you don't want to see them. And then the user should be able to choose that. But this way, Google actually just leaves all the 
these decisions up to the user making their life more complex as well. However, maybe I'm also missing something here and there is a very valid reason for this. If you have one and if you are actually a fan of these new permissions, then put it down in the comments and just share your opinion. What do you think about this new change? Also, if you disagree just like I do, then yeah, just let me know in the comments and let's have a little discussion there. So yeah, in the end, that is one big thing that will change with Android 13. There are of course a lot more things that will change um, that I found rather yeah, not so significant here with the developer preview number two. So for example, um, Bluetooth low energy audio will be introduced. That's rather a little bit bigger one, but the other ones are quite insignificant. So Bluetooth low energy audio is just, yeah, the next generation Bluetooth. Basically you can say to stream audio, which will just make sure that you have a better streaming quality while still keeping the battery consumption low if you actually listen to Spotify or whatever to listen to music. And Android 13 will then also support this new type of Bluetooth so you can implement it in your apps if your app is actually an audio streaming app. Then apart from that, there are some font and text-based optimizations like for example, they improve the text wrapping of Japanese texts which I think, yeah, it just affects a smaller portion of apps because not every app is a Japanese one. Then according to Google's plan, they will actually release the first beta of Android 13 in the next month. So more and more people get to try this out. By the way, if you actually own a Pixel device and you'd like to try out this new developer preview and provide some feedback to Google, maybe we can together provide some feedback for this notifications API, uh, permission stuff, then you can actually already try this out. So they have instructions on their documentation how you can actually install this on a Pixel device. So if you're interested in that, feel free to do this. I will include all the sources and all the stuff that I got this information here from in this video's description, so feel free to explore. And if you actually miss the previous Android news, which are still relevant in this month, then you can simply check it out here.